a certain Italian constructor for sure has helped out these two teams, as Haas are now in a titanic upper midfield battle, with also Sauber massively improving as well. So in this video I will look at how Haas and Sauber's 2018 season has gone so far, also what their best and worst races of 2018 have been so far and what they can improve upon. Coming into 2018, nothing really special was expected of Haas, after a quite mediocre 2017. But in pre-season testing, they caused quite a big shock, showing some very surprising pace at the end of the 8 days. And it looked as though they were dark horses going into the season. And once we got to Australia, their great pace was confirmed, as Haas were going to start the first race in 5th and 6th place. And for quite a while in the race, they were up in P4 and P5. Surely it was going to be a great day for Haas, but very soon it turned into a massive nightmare, as when both cars came into pit for the first time there were massive issues, with both cars not having tyres fitted properly, thus meaning that halfway through the race both cars retired. What a horrible way to start your season, throwing away at least 20 points, but for Bahrain they had to pick themselves up, and mostly for Bahrain they did as Kevin Magnussen qualified inside the top 10 and also got some points, finishing in a very high P5, a result they should have got in the first race. But it was very disappointing for Roman Grosjean, qualifying P16 and also missing out on some points, down to his own silly errors. Then when we came to China, Haas's performance did get worse, not qualifying that well in P10 and P11, and their pace in the race was not really that great either, as they only scored one point and now the team's performance was starting to dip. And this was all but proven in Baku, where in qualifying and the race they had no pace whatsoever, with Magnussen almost having a massive crash with Pierre Gasly during the race, and Roman Grosjean completely throwing away P7 after crashing under the safety car. A very embarrassing moment, as Roman now had no confidence, but at the Spanish Grand Prix they fired back with a surprise, as their car now was best of the rest again as Kevin Magnussen proved that by qualifying in P7 and finishing in P6 in the race. But for Grosjean, things continued to get worse, as he did not have the greatest qualifying and then crashed on the first lap, in a crash that was completely his fault, taking out Nico Hülkenberg and Pierre Gasly in the process. Roman had to step up, but in Monaco no one for Haas stood up, as like Azerbaijan they had absolutely no pace. Qualifying very low down and also finishing low down. But essentially this was down to a lack of upgrades for the Haas car. As Haas now get better from this point on. At the Canadian Grand Prix they definitely improved but not enough. As again Grosjean had a torrid weekend. Which included a massive engine failure at the start of qualifying. And that completely destroyed his weekend. And ensured that Haas would not score any points. At the French Grand Prix though their great pace was finally back as their car was dominantly ahead of that midfield battle. But still for Grosjean he continued to bottle it, as he crashed in qualifying and failed to score points in the race, which was simply not good enough in a car that was very quick. But at least for Haas, Kevin Magnussen did deliver, as he qualified in P7 and finished in P6 holding off the Mercedes of Valtteri Bottas, and he was now clearly the leader of that team. But then in Austria, finally Roman Grosjean scored points, Qualifying P6 and amazingly splitting the two Red Bulls, and then with the help of retirements went on to finish in 4th place, with Magnussen backing him up in P5. A truly special day for Haas, and also one that was very deserved, after what was the disaster back in Melbourne, and they were now a force to be reckoned with, and went on to show that again at Silverstone, qualifying very well on the 4th row of the grid, but they did not deliver in the race with only one of their cars in the points, and certainly not enough points with K-Mag in P9, as Roman Grosjean again had another crash, having a crash at the end of the race with Carlos Sainz. Haas continued to not deliver on race day, and it happened at the next race in Germany. Once again as expected, they were very quick during qualifying, but in the race once again with one of their cars they did not deliver with Kevin Magnussen not getting any points despite running in the points for a very long time. Basically because Haas panicked over what tyres to put on when it started raining, 
But at least for the team, Grosjean finished in P6 with a very spirited comeback, as Grosjean now was slowly accumulating points. And at the last race before the summer break, they went on Haas to have a very good race, with both cars qualifying P9 and P10 in a wet qualifying. And in the race, they both scored points as well, with Kevin Magnussen impressively up in P7, and Grosjean only scoring one point in P10. So a good way there for Haas to head into the summer break, after what has been a very eventful first half of 2018. A first half of 2018 that has been good for Haas. They are currently 5th in the Constructors' Championship with 66 points, with also 3 top 5 finishes and 10 points finishes. That is quite a big step up from last year, with also Kevin Magnussen improving as well. He is P8 in the Drivers' Championship with 45 points, and he has 2 top 5 finishes and 7 points finishes. Very impressive so far, but it has not been impressive for Roman Grosjean as he lies 14th in the Drivers' Championship with only 21 points. He does though have one top 5 finish but only 3 points finishes. Just not good enough. Haas's best race of 2018 has to be the Austrian Grand Prix, where even though they were expected to be good, they weren't expected to be that good. Again, splitting the two Red Bulls in qualifying. That is seriously impressive for a team that is very small compared to Red Bull. And then to get the result of P4 and P5 in the race, it has to be their best race. And as I said earlier, this team thoroughly deserves it. But their worst race has to be the first one. To be P4 and P5 and for it all to go wrong is such a massive disaster. They were riding high and then suddenly it went away. It was a desperately sad sight. And that could definitely cost them at the end of 2018. I hope it doesn't, but I think it really could. And now for the drivers, let's start off with Kevin Magnussen. What a season Kevin has had so far. Now, I've always been a bit of a fan of Kevin Magnussen, but I never thought he was this good. And I definitely did not think he could do this on a consistent basis. And he really has been consistent. There were plenty of people out there that doubted him. And this year, he has massively proved all of them wrong. So all good there for Kevin. But it has been seriously poor for Roman Grosjean. At a lot of the races, he has had the pace to be up there with his teammate. But so many times he has ridiculous crashes and just throws it away. For example, in Baku crashing under the safety car. Also, his crashes in Spain, France and Silverstone. And even though I am a fan, I have to say he has been terrible. Nobody can excuse his poor performance. And he has to improve going forward if he wants to save his seat at Haas. As right now, it is massively under threat. But going forward for Haas, they have a great chance of finishing 4th in the Constructors' Championship. And as long as they don't continue to throw away results, they will finish in 4th. So Haas, the pressure is on you. Pre-season though for Sauber started off very slowly, with the car lacking a lot of grip and not being that quick either. As they went off track plenty of times during pre-season, things were not looking good for Sauber. And the issues with their car were proven once we got to the Australian Grand Prix. As both cars qualified and finished in positions they normally ended up in in 2017. And at this point it seemed as though Sauber had not made any real progress. But that was about to change very quickly. As at the Bahrain Grand Prix they scored their first points of 2018. With Marcus Ericsson somehow finishing in P9. A fantastic result that was needed at the time to boost the morale of the team. For Charles Leclerc though, things were not going that well, as he was making rookie mistakes and not being that fast either. And this continued at the Chinese Grand Prix, as Leclerc made key mistakes in both qualifying and the race. But the pace of the Sauber that weekend was not too great, so they ended up with no points. But Leclerc had to improve. And in Baku, he did, providing an incredible result for the team, where after a not-so-great qualifying, he finished in P6 his first points finish in F1, and was one of the best drives of any driver so far this year as well. Finally, Leclerc was showing us how good he really is, and he would do it again at the Spanish Grand Prix in Barcelona, where again after a not so great qualifying, he finished in the points. He did not get P6, but he did finish in P10, a good result considering the Sauber was not good around that track, as also the performance of the Sauber was now starting to improve as well. At Monaco they looked good but did not get any points, as in the race Charles Leclerc crashed heavily into Brendan Hartley, costing him what would have been a decent non-points finish at his home Grand Prix. 
At the Canadian Grand Prix though, Sauber were back in the points. And it was Charles Leclerc who got it by finishing in 10th. And Sauber were now starting to rise up the pecking order in F1. Then in France, Leclerc put in one of his best performances of 2018. First off in qualifying where he got up to 8th place and also got Sauber's first Q3 appearance. And in the race he delivered on that again with more points. Leclerc was showing how much of a little star he was. And this is what could convince Ferrari to sign him for 2019. They would go on to score points again though in Austria but not only with one car. As Leclerc and Ericsson both got points with some fantastic driving. Performing overtakes late into that race to get into the points. As the Sauber car was getting even better. And that case was proven at the British Grand Prix. With Charles Leclerc and qualifying doing very well to qualify in 9th. But their race would not turn out well. As Leclerc retired with a wheel nut issue and Ericsson had a massive crash. Thankfully though he was all okay. But this was not good for Sauber in their massive fight with Toro Rosso. But in that fight they would strike back in Germany. As Marcus Ericsson for the third time this season got some more points. Capitalising brilliantly on the wet weather and also the safety car. But in the race Leclerc was making some quite rare mistakes. The kind of mistakes he was making back at the start of 2018. Finishing quite low down in that Grand Prix. Then at the Hungarian Grand Prix all of their good speed was gone. As after a poor qualifying they went on to have a poor race. With Ericsson only beating the two Williams in the Grand Prix and Charles Leclerc retiring. After making a lot of contact with the Force Indias at the start. But despite that Sauber's first half of 2018 was good. And way way better than 2017. As in the Constructors Championship they're currently 9th with 18 points. They don't have any top 5 finishes but have finished in the points on 8 occasions. Looking very good there for Sauber. And so far this year Charles Leclerc has proven why he is so highly rated. As he is 15th in the Drivers' Championship with 13 points. He doesn't have any top 5 finishes but has been in the points on 5 occasions. That is very good for being in a Sauber. And Marcus Ericsson also has had a good season. He is 17th in the Drivers' Championship with only 5 points. And of course no top 5 finishes but has been in the points on 3 occasions. That is certainly a big improvement on what he did last season. For me Sauber's best race of 2018 has to be the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. The pace they had with Charles Leclerc just came out of nowhere. Nobody was expecting them to be anywhere near that quick. And it has to be their best race because they finished in such a high position. I never thought Sauber this year would be finishing 6th in a Grand Prix. What a result that was. Their worst race in my view is the previous race of the Hungarian Grand Prix. Because in the races before that they were so fast. Qualifying up in 8th and 9th and also finishing in these types of positions. But then in Budapest they were absolutely nowhere. And because of their good form before that I have to say this is their worst race. I know they were never going to be good but still this was poor. So yeah that has to be their worst race. Now for the drivers let's start off with Charles Leclerc. Excluding about 5 races I have to say he has been fantastic. And has had one of the best rookie seasons I can remember. And would certainly deserve a seat at Ferrari for 2019. I'm expecting a lot more incredible performances going forward. And I also think that Marcus Ericsson has been good as well. And is probably his best year so far in F1. To do what he did in Bahrain for example was fantastic. Making the tyres last a very long time. And also his aggressive drive in Austria. Marcus can definitely be proud of himself so far. Now these two teams of course have been massively helped by Ferrari. There is no doubt to be had about that. Because right now the Ferrari power unit is the best in F1. And they're also helping Haas and Sauber technically as well. But Haas and Sauber still had to get those good results. So for me there's nothing wrong with Ferrari helping out these two teams. For Haas there's not much to improve. Maybe a bit of the aero but right now that is looking good as well. But Sauber must improve their aero. Because at high downforce tracks they are struggling quite a lot. But I'm sure with Alfa Romeo and Ferrari backing that is going to improve. These two teams for the rest of 2018 still have a lot to fight for. And with the way things are going 2018 could end up to be very successful. But anyway guys that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys I will be back on Sunday with a mid-season review of Williams and Toro Rosso. As well don't forget to join the Chaz HDF1 Discord community. The link to that is in the description also with my Twitter. 
Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what do you think of Haas and Sauber's 2018 so far. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time it's been me Chazzer HD, goodbye.